Have you heard of the pandemic treaty that Boris Johnson is looking to sign us into? So what it is, uh, it's a treaty with the World Health Organization that means in the future, future pandemics, as he said, will be run by unelected bureaucrats. Do you have any comments at all on what you think about that? Whether you agree with it, disagree unelected. with it? Unelected. Mm -hmm. no. Shouldn't be unelected. No. No, I think like if something as big as like a pandemic happens, mm. so we should choose like who we, you know, who we want to deal with it, right? I think it was a great conversation. I'm impressed by how many people knew about things, were interested in things. And boy, you know me, I'm a sucker for the jumbotron billboard trucks. That's what I call them. And I don't know. I mean, maybe it's because I've been on the no fly list for over a year. I just sort of miss hearing those British accents in, in beautiful UK. That is our UK reporter. And what a pleasure to have him join us now via Skype from the UK to talk about his journey uh, throughout the... Great to see you, my friend. So that was in Oxford, which is not too far from London itself, am I right? Yes, that's correct. Good to be here, Ezra, and good to see you. Lewis, um, you've been doing been a great job. I mean, we do a lot of those things. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Lewis, tell us how this came about and where you were. Where did you take the truck, Lewis? So... We finished our reporting in Davos, right? right? And I came home and I sat at home and I thought, I can't just sit around. I need to get out. I need to be active. I need to be doing more in regards to telling people about the WEF, telling people about this pandemic treaty. So with the help of uh, Rebel News, I set a foot on a journey with a video billboard truck and decided to take it around Sort of like a tour around England. We started with Oxford, travelled all the way up to Liverpool in the north of England, to Manchester, uh, to Leeds, Sheffield, Leicester, Cambridge, and then finishing back in Parliament Square and Downing Street, where we played that billboard and to get a lot of people's reactions. And obviously do a bit of streeters and try and figure out what the public think about the WHO, the WEF, and whether they trust them or not. That's great. What a wonderful tour of the UK. I mean, again, I'm just feeling a little uh, uh, sentimental and nostalgic for when I used to be able to fly there. Hopefully that day will come again. Um, tell me, was there a difference? I mean, what, you said you ended in Parliament Square. I've been there. That's basically what we would call our Parliament Hill. It's right outside uh, the, the chamber where the MPs have at it and the people on the street, odds are they're connected in some way to the government. They may be staffers, they may be bureaucrats, they may be lobbyists, but that's a very insider group. I'm guessing you had a very different response when you were up in the working class city of Manchester in the north versus when you were in the snootiest, snobbiest lobby bureaucrat zone of Parliament Square. That's just my guess. What was it like in reality? Complete. Um, <clears throat> that was completely correct. Uh, Liverpool, I have to say, was one of the toughest uh, routes we took. Very working class Liverpool as well. Very Labour stronghold. And getting people's reactions, it was mostly just about dissing Boris when we were right. up there. But they didn't understand the fact that the WHO, no matter if Boris even signs this treaty, it doesn't matter who will be in charge the overarch will be from the WHO. And trying to explain that to the working class uh, people of Liverpool was, was quite a difficult one. I had one guy um, who didn't get it at all, which you'll see. And he, I tried having a good conversation with him and tried to explain. And, you know, the same sort of buzzwords were coming around because of the, the word globalist and things like that and refused to shake my hand. The, strangely, though, the, the place with the most reception and the place with the most people who were engaging was in fact Derby, where the it was the birth of the Industrial Revolution, um, which was very, very um, insightful. And obviously, we're probably expecting a fourth one very soon. But Derby was was very interesting uh, over in the north of England. A lot of people were coming out and, you know, very hesitant about the WEF and what they want to be. Uh, implementing and reorganizing the world. Even one person off the street mentioned the Great Reset, which took me by surprise. Um, Parliament Square, there was in fact a 
demonstration happening with a lot of the Unite the Union lot. So, of course, you know, they love a good union. They love a good uh, one world government, if you want to even call it that. So they were quite hostile uh, in that sense. But, you know, it's all about planting seeds. It's all about getting the message out and getting people to understand what this pandemic treaty actually means. Well, Lewis, I wasn't uh, just uh, blowing sunshine at you when I said you got a great way about you. And even if someone resists you, you, you stay positive and upbeat. I think that looks really good on you and looks good on us for Rebel News. So thank you for that. Um, it's interesting what you're saying, because in, in the United States and I think in Canada, I see a new working class receptivity uh, receptiveness, I don't know what the word is, to challenging the UN and the World Health Organization, the World Economic Forum. I, I think the working classes sometimes say, well, you know what? The parties of the left aren't representing me anymore. Mm. They seem to be in league with big pharma, with the oligarchs, uh, big tech, Wall Street. Mm. So I see uh, sort of a Republican working class. I see in Canada... Mm. Uh, the prospective conservative leader, Pierre Polyev, really talking to the working class. And I was wondering if that would be the case in the UK. Do people in the UK who have lost their jobs, maybe their their factory has been offshored, perhaps, mm. do they still think that these globalist organizations like the UN are actually on their side? I mean, to me, it's, when you merge big government and big business, I don't think the working class is going to get ahead. And I don't want to sound like a Marxist, but it, it's sort of surprising to me if what you're saying is accurate, that working class and union members of the UK love the World Economic Forum and the UN. I, I don't know how that's possibly in their interests. I know, uh, and I completely agree with you. It's, it's It was a very mixed bag, I'll be honest with you. It was a mixed bag of people. You had three types of people in this trip. You had the people that were awake and understood who the WEF, who the WHO were, you had people who say, well, I don't know much about that, so I'm not going to give my opinion. And then when you explain it to them, they kind of seize up a bit and they go, actually, I know I don't know, so I'm not going to make a comment on them. And there was other people who say, well, anyone but Boris and, you know, uh, the, the WHO are essential. And that's what's very, very, um, A, confusing and B, fascinating at the same time. I think you're right. There is there is a definite Republican conservative style working class. Um, I want to say faction that is emerging that are sick and tired of these unelected bureaucrats over in Switzerland, Brussels, wherever, dictating what's going on to over 194 countries and implementing their vision of the world. Mm -hmm. So I, th I find it fascinating that these so-called anti-establishment types, left-wing, uh, working-class um, styled uh, people are actually siding with the corporations. They're siding with the United Nations and they're siding with huge um, global leaders that are part of the WEF. I, I, it's just, it's, it's unbelievable, really. So it, this trip was essential, I think, and it was also a fascinating one to see all of that play out. Here's an excerpt from my daily TV style show called The Ezra Levant Show. Each weekday, I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview a fascinating guest. I read some fan mail or hate mail, depends on which I like more, and we end with a video of the day. You can get it all at rebelnewsplus.com.